All right, so about a year ago, I did a video talking about the a7 IV and why I thought we'd see that camera in 2020. Well, obviously 2020 is gone and we do not have the a7 IV, but I'm optimistic that in 2021, we will be getting that camera. And, you know, just looking back at that video and looking at some of the predictions I made, some of the things I said, you know, I think there are a few things I definitely got very right. And there's definitely a few things that need to be updated since then, um, especially since, you know, in the last year, since I made that video, we've gotten cameras like the a7S III, we've gotten the uh, a7C. And so I think those cameras combined with like the a7R4, they're just gonna give us a much better idea of what the a7 IV is gonna finally look like when it finally does arrive. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. I thought it'd be fun to go back, revisit that video, and uh, just give you guys some updated thoughts on the a7 IV from my viewpoint. And so yeah, let's go ahead and jump on into it. All right, so the very first thing is going to be the most obvious, and that is gonna be the overall body design, the way the camera's gonna look and feel. I think that we're gonna get a camera that is gonna look very much like the a7 R4, except it's gonna have the flip out screen from the a7S III or the a7C, you know, something similar to that. So it's gonna be kind of a hybrid between that a7R4 and the a7S III. Um, I think that's very realistic. I don't think they're gonna give us the recording button on the top like they did on the a7S III. Again, a7R4, but with a flip out screen for the a7 IV, I think that's pretty realistic. And now I know not everybody is a big fan of the whole flip out articulating screen, I get it. There's part of me that kind of prefers the flip up, flip down thing too, but I think the reality is there's just so many people that really do like having that articulating screen who benefit from it and know not just vloggers. I really do think there's a lot of people out there who do want that, there's enough demand for it that I think this is really just gonna be the new path forward for Sony going forward. I think all their new cameras are going to have a flip out articulating screen, or at least most of their new cameras will. And uh, in general, I think there's definitely some upsides to it. There's maybe a couple downsides, but this is the path forward I think for Sony and uh, that's what we can expect. Now, along with that body design, uh, I think we're also gonna get obviously the other improvements like you get from the A7R4, like the deeper grip or the better ergonomics, the improved button feel and design and the new joystick. You're gonna get all the new flappy bits on the side for the memory cards and your HDMI slots and all that. So generally speaking, a lot of good upgrades over the A7III and uh, yeah, that's what I think the A7IV is gonna look like when it finally does get, in our, get into our hands. Okay, so another big hardware upgrade that I'm predicting for the a7 IV is going to be a new sensor. Now, this is a prediction that I made a year ago, and when I said this a year ago, a lot of people strongly disagreed with me, but I think it's still right even today, and I think we're gonna get a new 30 to 32 megapixel sensor. And again, a lot of the rumor sites right now, like Sony Alpha Rumors, they're predicting the same thing. And you know, I was saying this a year ago because I honestly believe that you know, Sony's been putting out 24 megapixel sensors for something like six or seven or maybe even eight years at this point. And I think technology has improved enough in sensor design and processor design and just all the other internals that they can produce a 30 to 32 megapixel camera that's going to perform very much like a 24 megapixel camera in terms of, you know, how quick it is, in terms of, you know, no overheating, in terms of low light performance. And it's gonna give us a little bit more resolution and still have file sizes that are small enough and workable enough to where it's not gonna slow us down in our workflow. So I think that's gonna be the new move forward. I think a lot of camera manufacturers like Sony and maybe even Nikon and Canon, you know, that's gonna be the new 24. It's gonna be like that 30 to 32 megapixel range. That's my prediction. And I think it's gonna be a great sweet spot. I know for me, if that's gonna be the case in terms of the a7 IV and resolution, what I'll be doing is getting rid of my a7 III and my a7 R3 and I'll just get two a7 IVs. I think 30 megapixels or 32 megapixels would be like the perfect sweet spot for me in the work that I do. And I think it'll be a nice sweet spot for most people in the work that they do for a hybrid camera as well. So that's my prediction regarding sensors. Okay, so another pretty good upgrade for the a7 IV is going to be a new EVF. I think we're gonna get the EVF out of the a7R III. Again, this is something that I said a year ago, and I think it still makes sense today. I think it makes the most sense. Uh, that EVF has already been designed. It's already been out there. The manufacturing is in place for it. They've got existing stock. Literally, all they have to do is just take it out of the a7R III and drop it in the a7 IV and be done with it, and it's gonna be a solid upgrade for the a7IV as well. And again, if you've ever watched any of my videos in the past, you know that I'm not particularly picky about viewfinders. I've never had an issue with the a7 III viewfinder. I know a lot of people do, but I've never really had an issue with it. It's never held me back or prevented me from getting the work done that I need to get done. And I shoot with an a7 III and an a7R III side by side at weddings all the time. So I'm constantly going back between the two of them very quickly. And it's never off putting going back to the a7 III. So again, to me, I think the a7R III EVF and the a7 IV will be a solid upgrade. Okay, so here's one that I'm really excited about and that I think is going to be true. And that is going to be that 
I think the a7 IV is gonna get the memory card slots out of the a7S III. So that means you get the dual CF Express Type A cards as well as the option to still use SD cards as well. And I think that's gonna be a really cool solid upgrade for the a7 IV that's really gonna set it kind of um, you know on a great path for being future-proof going down the road. And so I think that's gonna be a great feature. I know there's probably gonna be a lot of people who disagree with me on that. I know that's a, right now a feature that's very unique to the a7S III and a lot of the work that it does. But again, I think it's gonna help future-proof the a7 IV and it's gonna be a great addition for some of the features that we're gonna talk about later. But another key thing, another key reason why I think that's gonna be the case is because again, <laughs> If you watch any of my old a7 III videos, you know that one complaint that I've always had about the a7 III is just that whenever you're writing raw files from the buffer to the card, you're locked out of a bunch of different menus. And if you've ever used the a7 III, if you've ever been in that position where you need to make menu changes while it's writing images to the card, it's super frustrating. And a really easy way for Sony to fix that problem is just put faster cards in the camera or have the option for faster cards in the camera. And so by having those super, super fast CFast cards, it's gonna pretty much get rid of that problem for the most part, I think. So that's one big reason why I think they'll include that in the a7 IV is just to eliminate that buffer issue. Okay, so another big change on the a7 IV that I'm really predicting is going to be a new uh, shutter mechanism, a whole new shutter design. Uh, if you've ever been on any of the Facebook a7 III group forums or whatever you wanna call them, uh, one of the things you'll notice that's pretty common is people posting pictures of broken a7 III shutters. And realistically, I think in the grand scheme of things, of all the millions of a7 III's that have been sold in the world, uh, do I think the shutter failures on the a7 III are really as big as a problem as they seem to be? I honestly personally don't think that they are, but nonetheless, the perception is that the a7 III has a shutter issue. And I think Sony's gonna to try to address that and try to just go ahead and improve the reliability of the shutter even further. And one of the things that I have that sort of supports that reasoning or that rationale is because if you look at all the new cameras that have come out since the a7 III was released, all the new cameras have shutters that are a lot quieter. And I think they're quieter for two reasons. Okay, so another big prediction that I have as far as hardware goes is going to be a redesigned shutter in the a7 IV. Now, if you've ever been on any of the a7 III Facebook group forums or whatever you wanna call them, one thing that you've probably seen is people posting pictures of their a7 III with a broken shutter. Now, in the grand scheme of things, I don't really think the Sony a7 III actually has much of a shutter issue. I think realistically, there's just been millions of a7 III's that have been sold throughout the world, and obviously some percentage of them are going to have shutter issues, and because it somehow became perceived as an issue, now every time somebody does have a shutter that's broken, like they all post a picture of it. And so I think to some degree it's been blown maybe a little bit out of proportion, but I could totally be wrong as well. But nonetheless, I think Sony moving forward on the a7 IV is going, going to redesign the shutter to make it more reliable. And, um, and one of the main reasons why I think that is because if you look at all the new cameras that have been released since the a7 III came out, all the new shutters are much, much quieter. Now, I think Sony redesigned the shutter to make them quieter for two reasons. One, I think they did it simply to make the cameras quieter in operation. But two, I think they did it because they dampened the shutter a little bit more. They, they dampened that mechanism, took some of that impact out of it, just to make the shutter more reliable, more robust, and make it last longer in the long run. And so I think we will see a new shutter in the a7 IV that it will hopefully put all these shutter failure issues of the a7 III in the past. And another thing that I think we're gonna get out of that redesigned shutter is going to be um, faster you know, overall shooting speeds. So I think for mechanical shutter, I think we'll see something like 12 frames per second. And then for electronic shutter, I think we'll see 20 frames per second. Uh, now, again, the Canon EOS R6 is gonna be the closest competitor to the a7 IV. And those are the specs that that camera are hitting or is hitting. And so I think the a7 IV is really at a minimum gonna have to match that with 12 frames per second mechanical, 20 frames per second electronic. Now, if Sony really wanted to go overboard or really kind of knock it out of the park, I would really love to see 14 or 15 frames per second mechanical and like 25 or maybe even 30 frames per second ultronic. That's probably asking a lot, but I mean, that would be pretty cool, right? Okay, software, let's talk about upgrades as far as software, internals, that whole thing. Uh, I think the biggest thing, or at least the most notice noticeable thing that we're all gonna notice on the a7 IV is going to be a redesigned menu system. I think we're gonna get that same new menu out of the a7S III into the a7 IV. And uh, I, you know, I never really had an issue with the old menu system, a lot of people did. I never really found it that hard to navigate. I mean, there's just a lot of stuff in there. But that being said, I do feel like the new menu system out of the a7S III is a little bit more logical. It's a little bit more clean, it's laid out nicely. I like the fact that depending on whether or not you're in video or photo mode, you know 
the, ir the irrelevant features kind of go away or get grayed out. And I think that's a really great thing. And you know, even though I didn't find the old menu system bad, I'll definitely take any sort of upgrade they want to give me. Okay, so then along with that, I think another software change that we'll see is going to be the autofocus system. And I guess that's a little bit of hardware, a little bit of software, but nonetheless, I think we're gonna get some autofocus upgrades as well. It's pretty consistent with Sony. You know, pretty much every time Sony releases a new camera, you see a little bit of an upgrade with the autofocus system. And so I don't see any reason why we won't see that with the a7 IV as well. And one big thing that I think we'll see on this camera finally is going to be the real-time IAF for video as well as stills. So that's pretty much a given, I think. Uh, and then they might work in maybe some artificial intelligence into the autofocus algorithm, especially for things like lock-on autofocus. But just in general, I totally expect the a7 IV to be an amazing camera as far as autofocus goes. And I mean, the reality is like every camera I think since the a7 III really has been absolutely incredible as far as autofocus. So um, any improvements that they make are really just icing on the cake. Okay, another software change that's not really a big one, but it's kind of a big one to me. And that is that stupid little AF area box. I think we're finally gonna get that ability to change it from gray to red. Now, I know a lot of Sony cameras have already done this, like the a7R4, the a7S3, the a7C. Again, pretty much every camera since the a7 III has that ability to change that box, that AF area box color. Uh, but none of the cameras I own currently do that. The a7 III, the a7R3, my a6000, they're all gray. And if you've ever been in a situation where you're using flexible spot AF or zone or whatever, you know just how hard that stupid little box can f be to find in different situations. And as somebody who does a lot of weddings, like it's really frustrating being in a dynamic environment like that and something is happening in front of you, you really wanna be able to acquire focus and acquire your subject really quickly. But you know, you can't find the stupid little box. So you're like half pressing the shutter and trying to get the little green thing to light up so you can move it around. It's, it's just a mess. And when I did get my hands on an A7C a few weeks ago, one of the first things I did was I changed the box from gray to red. And although it wasn't perfect, it didn't totally eliminate it. Like there was definitely still times when it was hard to see. It was still way, way, way better than that dark dingy gray. And so that feature alone is gonna be one thing that's gonna make me want to upgrade to the A7 IV over the A7 III, A7R III when it does finally come out. Okay, moving on to video. I think this is gonna be one of the areas where a lot of people are gonna get excited with the a7 IV, particularly the hybrid shooters that are out there. So I think we're finally gonna get 4K 60 frames per second. And this has been something that so many people have been asking for for so long. They've been waiting for kind of a mid-range hybrid shooting camera with 4K 60 forever. And I think we're finally gonna get it with the a7 IV. Again, going back and making that comparison to the Canon R6, you know, that camera definitely does 4K 60 frames per second. So I feel like Sony definitely has to step up to the game and finally give us a full frame mid-range hybrid shooting camera like the a7 IV with 4K 60 frames per second. So I think that's a given. I think we're definitely gonna get that. Now, the one thing I'm not entirely sure on that I'm a little bit hesitant to say is I'm really optimistic that maybe, just maybe, Sony's gonna give us 422 10-bit internal. And I know, I know there's gonna be a lot of people on the keyboard right now like, no, there's no way they're gonna do it because that's really what separates these A7S III from everything else. And you know what, you're probably right. That's probably totally true. You're probably spot on. But I'm optimistic that maybe Sony will say, you know what, we don't care. We're gonna give you the world. We're gonna give you 422 10-bit internal because we can. And one reason why I think that might happen, and again, that's another comparison that I've made a bunch of times in this video, the Canon R6. Now granted that camera is a 20 mega megapixel sensor and I'm thinking this is gonna be 30 or 32 in the a7 IV, but nonetheless, I'm optimistic that maybe because that camera does 422 10-bit internally, then maybe Sony will allow the a7 IV to do that or they'll set it up or make it capable of doing that. Whether or not they will, I don't know. To be honest, people saying that it's gonna be an 8-bit camera are probably right, but I'm optimistic. I'm trying to stay positive here, guys. So pray with me. Let's all just, maybe if we all just like pray to the Sony gods at night and like just say, you know, whatever we need to say, maybe we'll get it, maybe we won't. But at a bare minimum, I'm really optimistic that they'll at least give us the ability to do 422 10-bit to an external recorder. Hopefully that at least they'll give us. But I do think there's enough difference between the a7 IV and what it will likely be versus the a7S III and what it already is that they may say, you know what, it's totally fine. Let's do 422 10-bit internal. Again, you know, only time will tell, but I'm probably wrong, but we'll see. Okay, so something else, uh, I haven't really seen too many people talk about this, but I'm kind of curious and I'm kind of interested and I'm crossing my fingers to see if they'll do 1080p, 240 frames per second. 
Now I know like this whole slow-mo thing at 240 frames per second, or I think that like the Sony RX10, is that the camera that's called? That thing does like a thousand frames per second. It's ridiculous. I think it's an APS-C camera, but nonetheless, like that's just nuts. And I know the whole super slow-mo thing to some degree is kind of overdone and everybody's been doing it for years now. And I know, yeah, I know there's some people who hate it, but it would be kind of cool, right? Like it'd be kind of interesting to have that ability just to play with, if nothing else, almost just as more of a novelty. But you know, there's definitely some situations like if you're doing commercial films and maybe, you know, you're doing something for like a beer company or a soda company, or you're trying to get carbonation in a beverage and trying to do something and roll that into your production. Like, you know, there's definitely some, I think, reasons why 240 could be useful. Um, I don't know, anyways, what do you guys think on that? Leave those comments down below. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on that 240 frames per second. Nobody's really talked about it, but I think, I think maybe, just maybe the A7 IV will have it. Okay, so last video thing I really wanna jump on is going to be the time limit thing. I think finally we're gonna get rid of the whole 30 minute recording limit on the a7 IV. I mean, realistically, every Sony camera since the a7 III, how many times have I said that? Like the a7 III was an amazing camera, but God damn it, they like, there are so many things that the a7 III just missed on a little bit that they brought out the very next generation. But anyway, I digress. Finally, on the a7 IV, getting rid of that 30 minute recording limit. Something that I've hated ever since I've gotten the a7 III, it's always been annoying. I'm dealing with it right now. I'm filming this video on the a7 III. I have to keep checking, making sure I didn't go over my 30 minutes and that this thing is still recording. Yeah, sure, you can use an external recorder that bypasses it, but you know, if you're going out to a shoot, a wedding, you know, a corporate thing, whatever, like it's just one more piece of gear you gotta bring with you and batteries to charge and hard drives and all that crap. It'd just be so nice to finally get rid of that on the a7 IV and I think certainly it will be gone. And it's definitely something I'm very much so looking forward to. Okay, let's talk price point, dollars and cents. How much is the a7 IV going to cost? I don't know. You know, when the a7 III came out, that camera was, you know, I think Sony undercut the market pretty significantly on that camera. I know everybody was shocked that Sony packed in as many features as they did for the price that they did, myself included. That was one of the reasons why I ended up switching over to Sony at the time. And, uh, you know, to be honest, I don't think they need to do that anymore. You know, at the time when Sony was still releasing cameras like the a7 II, the a7R II, the R3, the III, you know, they were still establishing themselves as a big player in the professional, you know, interchangeable lens camera market and you know if you remember back like four or five years ago a lot of people thought sony was a fad that they were never going to be suitable for professional work and you know there was a lot of that going around but now obviously fast forward to 2020 2021 you know we all know that's not the case sony is here to stay they're a, a major player in the camera market and the reality is i think at this point they've matured enough within the market to where they don't really need to undercut in terms of pricing anymore. I think they can more realistically price this camera where it really truly belongs. And I think it will probably be, again, somewhere close to the Canon R6. And again, that's what the early rumors coming out of places like uh, SonyAlphaRumors.com are saying. And I think that's probably pretty realistic. Now, if they did do something crazy like do 422 10 bit internal and 240 frames per second and all that, you know, it might be more realistically closer to 27, 28, $2,900, who knows? Um, but yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see, but I definitely do not believe it's gonna be $2,000 at the a7 III. I think they're gonna, again, raise the price and ask for um, a price point that's more realistic to what this camera is actually worth and capable of. All right, so let's talk timeline. Uh, to be honest, I have no idea. I don't have any you know, internal ties with Sony, so I have no idea when this thing's gonna come out. Uh, I'm just going off based off of what other people are saying in SonyAlphaRumors.com. I don't have any anything I've seen that gives me reason to believe it's gonna be something different than what they've said. And right now they're saying probably the end of 2021. And to be honest, I'm totally cool with that. You know, my a7 III, my a7R III, they're both still great cameras. I've got no issue with them. And I know between now and then, basically within the next year, eight months, nine months, whatever, I've got cameras that are more than capable of producing awesome content. So for me, there's really no worries there. Um, I just really want the camera sooner because it's gonna be a cool camera and I'm impatient. But uh, but yeah, no, a7 IV, I'm guessing probably later 2021, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, that's what things are looking like as far as timeline goes. All right, guys, that is gonna be it for this video. Those are really most of my main thoughts on the a7 IV. Uh, definitely a few things changed since last year now that we've had the a7S III, the a7C come out. I think that gave us a little bit more of a glimpse into what the a7 IV will finally look like. Uh, but yeah, guys, that's gonna be it for this video. Hopefully you found it entertaining or something. I don't know, like if you did, hit the thumbs up button. It would mean a lot to me. It would really help out the channel. Um, also, subscribe. 
down below, go hit that subscribe button. If you're watching this video, if you've watched any of my other previous videos, if you're here again, hit that subscribe button. Um, if you're not already subscribed, do it. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers. This is like four years in the making. I'm trying to beat that, get to that milestone. So if you could help me out, subscribe, more content coming soon. Um, yeah, come back. I want to see you guys again. Uh, if you got questions, comments, anything down below. If you think I'm crazy about the whole 4 2 10, 10 bit internal maybe being a possibility, leave those comments down below. I want to hear your thoughts. Um, any other questions, again, down below. And again, that's going to be it for this video. Those are my thoughts. So, as always, until next time, stay safe, keep shooting. Catch you in the next one. Peace.